Here now with Chris Hine, the Director of Customer Engineering for the Public Sector SLED team at Google. Chris, how's it going today? Uh, phenomenally well. It's, it, we've, we've had a really great couple of weeks and I'm excited for the, the rest of the year here. Absolutely. So, so Chris, you know, at today's IT Mod and AI Summit, uh, we are we're talking about all things AI, all things IT modernization, and I really wanted to come to you and sort of have a a really focused discussion on this idea of that collision between public sector IT modernization, which has been a priority for you know probably decades, uh, and and the rise of of generative AI. Uh, you know, tell us about what you're seeing about kind of this moment in government, and and really is this is this you know embrace of ai is this happening at a, at a good time for public sector leaders yeah absolutely jake i i think what what's happening right now is this you know i think if you looked at even just last year maybe ai was uh, maybe it was a bit of a distraction right it was hard to know exactly what you're going to do with this this shiny new tool and making sure that it is something that is a tool that is worth utilizing right i think we've we've all lived through different technology transformations that may or may not have panned out in terms of of how much value they added to that ability to to do you know uh, digital transformation and it modernization I think we're starting to, to feel much more solid in our footing at this point that we we do actually have a real winner here in terms of a tool that is going to push the boundary of what's possible when it comes to IT modernization, right? And so the reason that, that we're seeing that is is multifold, but but a couple of the, the main points that I'd bring up on it is, you know, one is just the the overall ability to to start to to really capture what these systems are doing, right? Which is, you know, it's it's the weird thing of how technical debt mounts on you is that oftentimes you've you've lost the the institutional knowledge of what is going on in the internals of these systems, right? Especially if you go all the way back and you're still running on a mainframe system, those things, you know, a lot of that coding happened a generation ago, quite literally, right? And so being able to have an AI system that that can dig into the guts of that, right? And, you know, not just do, you know, we've, we've had technologies in the past that allowed us to do code conversion of that. But what we're now trying to see and what we're now seeing in practice is using an AI tool that understands those old languages and can then take that and not translate it into a new language, but translate it into English, right? And so translate it into a project requirements document that says, here is what this system has to be able to accomplish in order for it to do its task. And I think that's a, it's a real key difference from, from the technologies that we've played with in the past, because it doesn't just leave you in this state where, okay, great, I've got a jumble of code that I still don't know what it's doing, but it seems to do it the same way, I hope, right? And so that's been a, a, a big kind of shift in this movement of saying, all right, great, now I can actually have at scale, right? Like you could have paid a, a whole bunch of coders to do this, but it, you just never were going to be able to afford that kind of a project. At scale, you can now really write out the, the requirements of what's going on in some of these systems. And so that's that's kind of the, the part one that I'd, I'd say is the reason that this is the right time for that tool is it's we've had this mountain of tech debt that just gets bigger over time. And this allows us to, again, you're not going to fully get rid of that, but you at least can start to articulate what it looks like to replace one of those systems more fully, right? So that'd be the, the first big component. I'll mention a couple others and then you can tell me where you want to dig in on it. You know, the other things that we're seeing, you know, even here at Google, right? I, I, we're now seeing 25% of code that is being deployed into Google's core systems was generated code, right? And so we employ the world's best software engineers, and we're still seeing 25% of our overall code base being augmented by generative AI. And so what that should mean for, for folks in the, in the public sector technology space is that this is the time to start to, to have your own development teams really exploring and understanding what can this tool do for us, right? This is not a push and, you know, ignore it, right? Like you should still be using coding best practices. You should still have the right kind of pipelines to do automated testing. 
but it does mean that you can get a lot more out of all of the software engineering talent that, that you have on staff, right? I know a lot of different agencies that, that do have good qualified engineers that are doing good work, but to be able to say, hey, let's get them, let's get them more empowered to, to do more with with less with the same amount of time that they had previously, right? The third big bucket, and then I'll I'll take a pause, is also just looking at the fact that generative AI creates it creates an ability to do constituent engagement that, that just just all the tools of the past hinted at, but now we're finally seeing it happen, right? Where you can really say, I'm going to put a tool out there that understands my agency, understands my data, and can be useful in a few weeks, not months or years of training and intent building and all of these different things that have to happen. And so that third bucket is really that, that idea that being able to do that digital transformation, like there is now a tool that's in front of you that can be, again, it's not it's not an overly difficult tool. You don't have to, to be, you know, a PhD in machine learning to be able to, to be effective at it. And so having that third big bucket of constituent engagement is the the thing that I think is, again, that the right moment for, for that tool to enter the arena. I think, I mean, all the, all three of those are really, really stellar points. And I think what really stood out to me about all three of them was this idea of context, right? Like the, the, the AI is bringing context to a table where, you know, for, for lack of a better phrase, CIOs and IT leaders were kind of just running around from problem to problem trying to solve, solve the issues of the day. How does all this come together into like a strategy that that CIOs should be thinking about uh, when it comes to IT modernization and AI and sort of building for the future? Question. You, you know, I think the strategy is going to, obviously, it's not going to be one size fits all, right? Everybody's going to have to have kind of their own way that this makes the most sense to them. But the things that I would make sure are part of every piece of those, right, and what, what that needs to look like uh, is, one, you, you absolutely need to be empowering your staff to, to go get acquainted with what generative AI can do for them today. Right. Um, you know, I, I talk to a lot of agency leaders who, you know, I, I fear that there's this, oh, we're going to have and, you know, our chief data officer is now also our chief data and AI officer. And that person is going to be responsible for understanding how AI can be used in our agency. Right. And good to have someone that is providing structure and direction. I don't, I don't want to say that's a bad thing. But I don't want it to become something where that person has to be the only one that understands what this stuff does, right? And so by part of the biggest, you know, like learning that we've seen here is I'm constantly telling my team here at Google, default to trying something with generative AI as part of the process, right? Make sure that's part of your workflow before you go do something else, right? And so I think the, the best case scenario for, for everybody is if you're looking at doing, okay, we've got to write a new um, you know, RFP for, for, for modernizing a system, your first step should be, what, what do we know about this? What, what would AI help us to understand before we put this RFP together? What kind of elements can, can be kind of automated out before we put it into the RFP? And so by, by kind of putting it and embedding it into the overall exploration process, that's the, that's the most key thing that I would say right now. It's like, I think, you know, there's a lot of folks that when you actually show them what it can do, they're shocked. And, and I wish they weren't because if they, if they went and played, right, like they'd be like, hey, I knew that one. Give me the, give me the deeper level one, right? Like uh, that's, that's, those are the conversations that I love. Uh, so that'd be, that'd be a big part of the strategy, I'd, I'd say, is just make sure that they're embedding the process of exploration in a safe and secure manner, right? Like don't go off and use consumer tools, like that is not the right process to, to follow. Let's, let's make sure we're following enterprise best practices, but creating a good safe space to, to go in and do that exploration. That, that'd, be, that'd be perhaps my, my biggest thing I want to see people do. You know, you know, maybe the secondary one is I'd say that the other biggest thing is make sure make sure that you're looking at this moment as as transformational as it actually is, right? And what that means is we should not replace systems with systems that look exactly like them, but maybe they run on a better platform than they did yesterday, right? That you know like that's that's not negative, right? Like that's not a negative transition. 
But I think it misses the opportunity space that's in front of us to say, we've got this this brand new set of tools that it's just the same as like, you know, we, we had, you know, uh, whole teams of human calculators that were replaced by spreadsheets, right? You had to think differently to say like, okay, well, don't just make it so that the calculator goes faster for that individual person. Like, what if you had a whole, the, the whole thing's being done by a spreadsheet, right? We need to make sure that as we look at the different processes and products that government creates, that we rethink some of those elements, those core elements of, of how they are accomplished at that same time. So, you know, it's challenging. That's not an easy thing to do, but it is so important so that we, we get this stuff right. I think that the, the kind of the process improvement, the system improvement point is is so, so, so important. And it's something that, you know, you can say it 15 times and it's probably uh, 15 times, not too many. <laughs> we need like 15 <laughs> times more than that. Um, so, so to kind of wrap us up, Chris, you know, I, I want to sort of turn this into something forward leaning, get us excited about what's coming down the pike uh, from companies like Google, but also just in the general landscape of, of AI. So what does it look like if we if we do what we've talked about here, right? We embrace AI and use it to enable IT modernization. What does that set up CIOs and public sector IT leaders for in the next couple of years? You know, I think what it does is it it makes it so that uh, our, our kind of bucket list of, of items, right, suddenly becomes so much more attainable that, than it was, right? And so in terms of like what's coming down the pike, right, I think, A, one of the biggest fears in the year and a half that we've really been exploring generative AI has been hallucination. And you know, like there's been this implicit fear of of using any of this because we've all read the the bad press. We've all seen the stories about these things. And where I think things are changing is the frontier models that are being that are being released these days, like a, the hallucination is much, much better, right? But b, the tool chain that we're all kind of building, both in the open source and in the major cloud providers, the tool chains are getting sophisticated enough that we're seeing the ability to, to release these tools without the, the deep concern of like, what if it makes something up, right? We can make sure that it is working off of your data set and only your data set, and it's only answering the questions you want it to be answering. And so you can very much feel a lot more levels of confidence in these tools as, as they continue to go forward. The, the next couple of things that, that are exciting to kind of see the, the movement towards is just, the the ability to create an agentic workflow right and so basically going from a a single use ai you know like bot that does one thing is saying like all right there are times where this is actually like it's a complex workflow and at each stage of that workflow if you had an agent that again can have the its uh resiliency and its accuracies levels high enough you can have that hand to the next agent that hands to the next agent that completes a process for you. And so these, these agentic workflows are, are really ways that you can start to say, I've got a complex thing. I don't know if AI can actually solve it. And now it's like, you're probably right. Don't have one AI that does all this stuff. But let's say there's break that problem into pieces. And each one of those pieces, there might be a really good place to put an AI agent into. So I would say be between those two things that we're seeing much, much better tooling all around, uh, I feel really confident and excited that we're going to make uh, CIOs lives considerably easier uh, in the next couple of years. That's awesome, Chris. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you can't you can't beat that. You can't be making lives easier. Uh, and certainly a lot to be excited about now, but also so much to look forward to into the future. Uh, Chris, thanks for being here today with me. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity, Jake. Thank you. And to our audience, stay tuned for more from today's IT Modernization and AI Summit.